So over here we can actually see um, two different types of graphs. The first one is the displacement distance graph and the second one is the displacement time graph. Now these two graphs um, represent different things okay as I have explained before but these two graphs can be used together in conjunction to talk about the same wave. For example this one, this one would tell me the amplitude of the wave and also the wavelength while this graph over here could be about the same wave it tells me the amplitude of the wave again these two numbers should be the same of course and it also tells me the period so in summary the distance displacement graph shows the position of all displaced particles on a wave at a particular instant it's like taking a photograph from a boat you will get the amplitude from here and the wavelength okay however the displacement time graph shows the path of one particle over a period of time so for displacement time graph you could find the amplitude once more but this length over here would not be the wavelength it would actually be the period like watching a rubber duck float in the sea okay so now let's try some practice questions the figures below show the displacement distance graph and the displacement time graph of the same wave so these two graphs actually represent the same wave um, the wave that is traveling along of along a length of rope here is a question that i would like you to solve right now you can pause the video here and then when you're done solving the problems you can press play again and we will go through the answers now to give you the answers the first one that we need to find is the amplitude the amplitude would be the length from the distance from the zero earth line over here to the peak or to the trough now we can see here the number is 1.5 this one should be zero and the bottom should be minus 1.5 therefore the amplitude should be 1.5 meters okay so now the next one we need to find the wavelength right so for the wavelength we need to choose more of these graphs to, graphs to use and we should choose the displacement distance graph now the easiest way to measure the wavelength using the information we have in this graph look at the length that we have right now over here you can see that it says 4.5 therefore this length over here represents 4.5 meters contains one loop downwards one loop upwards and one more loop downwards making a total of three loops now we know that a length of a wavelength right can be measured from two points in the middle section that are in phase so this part over here the wave is going up right it's going upwards and then we can see the next point where it goes upwards is over here therefore one wavelength would be the point from here until here we need to find out the length of the wavelength from here until here so the length of our wavelength can therefore be classified as what I would call two bumps one up bump and one down bump so here we have three bumps with 4.5 meters so what I would do is a wavelength will be 4.5 I'll first divide it by 3 4.5 divided by 3 I will get the length of one bump which would be 1.5 meters and then after that I would times 2 which means two bumps what is the length of two bumps so that will be 1.5 times 2 and you'll get you 3 meters so the wavelength would be 3 meters so how do we get the period t we should look actually at the graph that's on the bottom because the period t can only be gotten from the displacement time graph it was roughly the same concept as how to get the wavelength remember that we talked about the wavelength being two bumps one up and one down bump or one down and one up bump so we also need to find the time taken for one up and one down bump the time taken for two bumps to occur so this bump okay so you can see here that um, on this length there is a measurement of 7.0 seconds so this number of bumps happened this number of loops happened in seven seconds so how many loops are there? I, I will count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there are 7 
loops or bumps occurring in 7 seconds. Therefore, what I will do is to get a period, I will get firstly 7 seconds divided by 7 loops, therefore finding the time taken for one of these bumps to occur. One of these bumps will take 1 second to move. The period will be for 2 bumps to occur, which is from here, it will go down, up and down. So this time period will be 1 second times 2 and therefore the period of this will be 2 seconds. Now to calculate the frequency, it's actually um, quite simple if you have the period. So the frequency is simply following the formula f is equals to 1 over t. So we know the period is 2 seconds, therefore the frequency will be 1 over 2, which will get you 0 0.5 hertz. Now, finally, we're going to talk about the speed of the wave. Now, this one also, if you have all the relevant information, this should be a walk in the park. It should be pretty simple. So the speed of the wave would just be uh, v equals to f lambda, which is the frequency times the wavelength. Over here, uh, we have already told you that these two graphs represent the same wave. Therefore, they can be used in conjunction with each other. So the frequency is 0 0.5 hertz and the wavelength is 3 meters. So the speed of the wave would be 0 0.5 times 3, which should get you a final speed of wave of 1.5 meters per second.